Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another unusual discovery from the James Webb Space Telescope. And yeah, once again it's galaxies. Galaxies that nobody expected, and galaxies that right now don't really make a lot of sense. But the question is, do these galaxies break any modern theories, and is there anything we're discovering that shouldn't really make sense? So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, focusing on this new study by Meng Xiao and his team that discovered unusual ultramassive galaxies in the first billion years, the galaxies that have now been nicknamed Red Monsters. But I guess before we talk about this discovery, let's briefly take a look at some of the recent discoveries from the last few months. Although here I just wanted to focus on some of the strangest discoveries. For example, recently we've discussed this galaxy that was only formed about 200 million years right after the Big Bang, that seems to contain unusual brightness indicating a frenzy of star formation. And because many stars here have been calculated to be at least 90 million years old, it means that all of this has been going on for at least some time. There's actually even signs of things like oxygen that basically suggest several supernova have already happened, and a lot of dust and a lot of different particles have already mixed in, producing second generation stars. But once again, this is approximately 290 million years right after the Big Bang, something that was previously thought to be maybe impossible. And since this galaxy also contains a really large halo of very young, very powerful stars that have been actively reshaping this galaxy for at least 90 million years, this was one of the first signs that essentially star formation and galaxy formation might have been extremely different from how we always imagined it to be. And specifically different from various simulations such as the famous Illustris project that showed us galactic formation and star formation as a much slower and a much more methodic process. Essentially suggesting that galaxies form gradually and usually inside really large dark matter halos that slowly capture all kinds of gas and eventually forms gravitational instabilities that turn approximately 20% of this gas into various stars and eventually galaxies. This is basically the process you're watching behind me. And so these observations from the James Webb basically put a big question mark on this entire process, with a lot of findings from 2023 and 2024 challenging these previous assumptions. Because it looks like many galaxies actually form stars much more vigorously, and a lot of really massive galaxies in the early universe were potentially very efficient at building stars and growing extremely fast very rapidly. We've actually discussed some of these previous discoveries when we talked about little red dots and the discovery of unusually massive black holes, along with the galaxy known as Jade's GS Z14, the videos about which you can find in the description. And so in essence, in 2023 and early 2024, James Webb Space Telescope started to provide us with a lot of different evidence for these unusually massive, dust-obscured galaxies that were actually hiding huge amounts of star formation and really massive black holes. But one of the main questions that was basically asked here is, okay, so does this actually break some of the theories and some of the assumptions, especially the assumptions coming from the famous Lambda CDM model? The model that explains the universe using the dark matter, dark energy, expansion of the universe, and the formation of galaxies using these dark matter principles. In other words, should we actually start rewriting some of the physics and potentially recalculate certain things? And that's basically what this recent study decided to focus on. They essentially tried to reveal unexpected discoveries using these unusual galaxies, mostly present in the first billion years of the universe, in order to see if something is up or if it's still okay, and we're just basically seeing something unusual, but not something that breaks physics. And naturally, for all of these studies, James Webb was absolutely perfect. It helped the researchers reveal a lot of hidden details in many of these observations, even though technically these galaxies have been previously visible to us even using the Hubble Space Telescope. And here the focus was on 36 massive dust obscured galaxies with redshifts between 5 and 9. And specifically focusing on the James Webb Fresco program, the link about the survey is also in the description, that mostly uses near-infrared observations and the observations using spectrograph in order to measure extremely accurate distances and also stellar masses of various galaxies. With one of the first discoveries being that, well, looks like, the star formation in many of these early galaxies was extremely efficient, much faster and much more vigorous than previously assumed and previously simulated. 
And that of course does actually challenge some of the galactic models. But the main focus was on 36 galaxies, where previously researchers only actually had ultraviolet data, and their actual distances were not yet confirmed. And specifically because with a lot of these galaxies, some studies and of course some videos on YouTube basically claim that many of these discoveries kind of break the modern physical models, including Lambda CDM. And especially because so many of them have been discovered at much farther distances than we ever thought possible. But one of the first discoveries from this study is that there does not seem to be any tension with the models we have. Or basically these observations are kind of in line with what's really expected. And remember, this is based on some of the most accurate, most extreme observations we have to date. Out of all of these 36 galaxies, even though they're a little bit unusual, they don't really break anything. And to make the point even stronger here, researchers focus on three main galaxies. The three giants. Three ultra-massive galaxies, actually even more massive than the Milky Way, that seem to be forming stars super vigorously, at least twice as much as expected. And here the surprise is that they seem to be just really, really efficient at forming stars. Approximately 50% of all of the mass seems to be converted into stars instead of being thrown away into the outer galaxy. And it's really this efficiency that's actually kind of surprising. Surprising compared to a lot of similar galaxies at similar distances or galaxies much closer to us at much later times. So basically these three giants are so giant and so bright only because they are very, very efficient at converting mass into pure energy. At least twice as efficient but possibly even more. And prior to this, all of the other galaxies usually displayed relatively similar efficiency and were not nearly as efficient. These galaxies really stand out. First of all, they do contain a huge amount of dust, which actually makes them very red in appearance. There are actually some of those unusual little red dots we mentioned previously, but because they're also much brighter, they're now referred to as the red monsters. Monsters that are even technically visible in the optical light as well. But the main focus here was to try to calculate the most precise distance and the most accurate stellar mass measurements, essentially highlighting how extremely accurate some of the observations from the James Webb really are. But once again, this is a really important side note here, none of these observations conflict with modern predictions or modern theories when it comes to the standard cosmological model. The only thing that seems to be in conflict here is the idea behind galactic formation and the efficiency of star formation in a lot of these early galaxies. And so because here we seem to be finding way too many of these really bright, really massive, really powerful galaxies, that's of course the new question. Why? There seem to be some unique processes at work here, and they seem to allow these galaxies to form stars super quickly, but exactly what's responsible for this is currently unknown. It's just a little bit more clear now that early universe was very, very efficient and produced a lot of stars and many different massive black holes. Something that older predictions could not anticipate and something the simulations could not show us either. And interestingly, these unusual massive galaxies also seem to actually account for close to 20% of all star formation in the first billion years of the universe. So essentially, a lot of star formation was usually in these very bright, very massive, very concentrated galaxies that became so bright and so powerful that we can actually still see them today. But once again, why? So one of the potential explanations here is that maybe there is some kind of a supernova feedback that we still don't understand that basically causes a lot of star formation in many of these early, really dense galaxies because many different supernovas start to go off one after another, which basically causes some kind of a chain reaction, forcing new stars to form quickly, go supernova again, and repeat the process over and over. Now this is just an assumption for now, and this is based on some of the interpretations from this study, we obviously have no evidence. But the other potential explanation is that maybe the central black holes play some kind of a role in this as well. Specifically, maybe these active nuclei or these active black holes contribute to star formation in some kind of an unusual way. So basically, if we find a galaxy with a really massive, really powerful black hole, especially in the early universe, it seems to somehow encourage the star formation as opposed to extinguishing stars, which is usually what we see in a lot of different black hole systems in the universe today. Likewise, maybe there's something else going on here such as contributions from mysterious dark matter, dark energy, or something else entirely. 
Maybe it's all about very powerful magnetic fields, which many of these galaxies very likely possessed. And so right now there is really no clear picture and no clear explanation, just a lot of evidence that many, many different galaxies early on were super, super efficient and efficient at both producing stars and producing massive black holes. But when it comes to breaking physical models, and especially the dark matter, dark energy, lambda CDM model, right now we seem to be kind of fine. These new observations still fit the model, and the researchers once again find no tension with anything. So yeah, the Big Bang still stands, dark matter and dark energy still seems to exist, and yeah, you probably have to go to work or to school tomorrow. So basically nothing changes here. But because there are so many new mysteries discovered pretty much every month now, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional observations, new evidence or more unusual discoveries, either from the James Webb or other telescopes. Until then, thank you for watching, check out previous videos on similar topics in the description below, subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.